Memory. It's the key to our identity. Without memory, we are nothing. It's who we are. And memory hackers. Right now. The rule of St. Benedict says, during the winter season, that is from the 1st of November until Easter, the brethren will rise at what may reasonably be calculated as the eighth hour of the night, so that having rested till somewhat past midnight, they may rise fully refreshed. And the time that remains after the night office should be devoted to the study by those brethren who have some of the Psalter or lessons to learn. When I first read about monks getting up in the middle of the night to pray, I thought that it couldn't be healthy for them to interrupt their sleep like that. It seemed to me that they were practicing a very extreme and unnatural form of asceticism. Well, I was wrong. Just a few weeks ago, I learned about second sleep, which is also called biphasic or segmented sleep, and that's the topic of today's video. Do you notice that St. Benedict says that when monks wake up a little past midnight that they'll be fully refreshed? Most people who read that prior to the Industrial Revolution would have thought that that had made perfect sense. In a 2012 article for the BBC, Stephanie Hegarty wrote, A growing body of evidence from both science and history suggests that the eight hours sleep may be unnatural. Hegarty reported that in the early 1990s, a psychiatrist named Thomas Weir conducted an experiment, and he placed a group of people into total darkness for 14 hours every day for a month. And it took a little while for their sleep to regulate, but by the fourth week, the subject settled into a regular sleeping pattern. Well, they slept for the first four hours of sleep, then they woke up for one or two hours, and then they fell back into a second four hours sleep. In his book, Days Closed, Night and Times Past, Dr. A. Roger Eckert of Virginia Tech cites more than 500 references to segmented sleep in diaries, court records, medical books, and literature. The references describe a first sleep of about four hours that begins about two hours after sunset. The first sleep is then followed by a waking period of about one or two hours, which is then followed by a second sleep. And that's consistent with Dr. Ware's study. According to the BBC article, during this waking period, people were quite active. They often got up, went to the toilet, or smoked tobacco, and some even visited neighbors. Most people stayed in bed, wrote, and often prayed. Countless prayer manuals from the late 15th century offered special prayers for the hours in between sleeps. This more natural pattern of segmented sleep or second sleep was often accompanied by a light afternoon nap or a siesta. We can also see references to a second sleep cited in scripture. I rose at midnight to give praise to thee. We see that the early Christians continue this practice as we read in the New Testament. At midnight, Paul and Silas praying praised God. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, the apostles observed the Jewish custom of praying at midnight. The Christian prayer of that time consisted of almost the same elements as the Jewish, recital or chanting of Psalms, reading of the Old Testament, to which was soon added readings of the Gospels, Acts, and Epistles, and at times, canticles composed or improvised by the assistants. In time, the church established the divine office, which is also often called the breviary, canonical hours, or the liturgy of hours. This called for prayers seven times a day, and it also included prayers at midnight. The call for prayers at seven times a day was in accordance with scripture, which states, Seven times a day I have given praise to thee. The Catholic Encyclopedia continues, During the course of the fifth century, the office was composed, as today, of a nocturnal office, namely vigils, afterwards matins, and the seven offices of the day. Please note that the Catholic Encyclopedia was written about a hundred years ago. So it's referring to the continuing practice of Catholics praying seven times per day, which was prior to the Second Vatican Council. However, after the Second Vatican Council, Pope Paul VI restructured the Liturgy of the Hours and eliminated midnight prayers, and he also combined three prayers into one single daytime prayer. The restructuring resulted in only five prayers, which is a deviation from tradition and scripture. So how did this happen? Well, in part, this was because people stopped waking up in the middle of the night to pray. According to Dr. Aker, references to the first and second sleep started to disappear during the late 17th century. And the trend started with the upper middle class in Northern Europe. And over the course of the next 200 years, it filtered down throughout 
the whole of Christian society. And he attributes the shift to street lighting, lighting in homes, and the introduction of late night coffee houses. People were becoming increasingly time conscious and sensitive to efficiency, certainly before the 19th century. But the Industrial Revolution intensified that attitude by leaps and bounds. So, nowadays we're told that we should get eight uninterrupted hours of sleep, and we're told that that's healthy. However, science is telling us something that maybe is different. Maybe eight hours of sleep isn't natural. Now, since learning about second sleep, I've been watching my patterns, and I've noticed that I wake up naturally almost exactly four hours after I fall asleep, and this is something that I never kept track of before. I'd like to hear what your experiences are, and please feel free to post them below. When we do wake up at night, and this is the point of the video, it's a perfect opportunity to pray to God. Our ancestors, who did this every night, would typically pray the 133rd Psalm. Behold now, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. In the nights, lift up your hands to the holy places, and bless ye the Lord. May the Lord out of Zion bless thee, he that made heaven and earth. Well, thank you for watching this installment. We'll be back again in about a week with another one. In the meantime, please pray for the church. I'm going